everybody! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches Show. As a lot of you know, I like to change up the decor in our home to match the change in seasons. A little while ago, we gave the craft room an autumnal overhaul, and while I was cleaning up the kitchen a couple days ago, it occurred to me that that is a room in our house that could use a bit more of a fall infusion. <laughs> so today, we're going to make a simple little dishcloth. Dishcloths and hot pads are such an easy way to add a little seasonal punch to the kitchen. It's a quick project, it's a fun project, and it's useful. So for this project, I jumped into my cotton yarn stash, and I like to use cotton for kitchen projects because it's easy to wash and they won't melt if it comes into contact with high heat. And the color palette that I'm using for today's project was inspired by the Goldenrod and Tartarian Honeysuckle palette that we made up in our last video. If you missed our video on 11 colorways for the early fall, we'll put the link for that in the description box down below, and you can check it out for a little fall inspiration for your own colorway for this project. We're also going to use a really simple scallop stitch, and I changed color every row. The result of that, I feel, makes it look like a whole bunch of little leaves that have changed color, fallen out of their homes in the trees, and come to rest on the forest floor. Pretty seasonal, simple, and super useful. So, let's grab our hooks, grab our cotton yard, head on over to the craft table, and we will make ourselves up some seasonal harvest dishcloths. For today's dishcloth, I'm using 100% cotton yarn in four different colors, brown, yellow, red, and green. They're all worsted weight, size four yarns. You need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm using a 4.25 millimeter hook or a G6. You can also use a 4.5 millimeter, a 5 millimeter, or a 5.5 millimeter hook if you have it. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Pick any color you want to begin with and make a slip knot. Then we're going to chain 32. Once you have a foundation chain row of 32 chains, we begin our pattern stitch. We skip the first chain from the hook, find the next one, and single crochet into it. Skip the next two chains, find the third, and work five double crochets into it. For the purpose of this pattern stitch, five double crochets is one fan. So that's five double crochets worked into the same chain. Skip the next two chains, find the third, and single crochet into it. Skip the next two chains, find the third, and work five double crochets or a fan into it. Skip the next two chains, find the third, and single crochet into it. And that is the pattern. Skip the next two chains, find the third, and work a fan into it. Skip two chains, find the third, and single crochet into it. And the act of single crocheting on either side of every fan is what creates the scalloped look. So you can go ahead and work this pattern stitch to the end of row one, and I'll catch up with you there. When you're nearing the end of row one, you should work your last fan, skip two stitches, have one left, and that is where you single crochet to finish row one. So at the end of row one, you should have a total of five fans that are now shaped like scallops. One, two, three, four, and five. Five fans. If you are not changing colors, you will chain three and turn your work. If you are changing colors, like I am, I'm going to change colors at the end of every row, finish with your single crochet, snip your yarn, fasten 
that's enough. Grab your next color, and for me that's going to be this nice green. Make a slip knot. Make sure you turn your work as though you haven't changed color. So you're looking at your little fastened off chain or your fastened off tail here. And you're going to attach your new color into the single crochet that you finished that row with. So join your yarn with a slip stitch and chain three. So if you didn't change color, you chained three and turned your work. If you did change color, you fastened off, joined your new color with a slip stitch in the same stitch as the fastened off or that single crochet worked in the previous row, and then chain three. Either way, we are now heading back across row one. That chain three at the beginning of every even row, so row two, four, six, eight, etc. Every even row begins with a chain three, whether you're changing color or not, and that chain three counts as a double crochet. Every even row begins with a half fan. So we're going to double crochet twice more into the same stitch that we chained three out of. So that's three double crochet. That three double crochet counts as a half a fan, and that's how every even row begins and ends. Then you're going to skip two stitches, find the third, which should be the very middle of the next fan from the previous row, and single crochet into it. Skip two stitches, find the third, and that should be the single crochet between fans from the previous row, and work a full fan into it. So work five double crochets into that little single crochet between the fans. After you've worked five double crochets or a full fan into that little stitch between fans from the previous row, skip two stitches, find the third that should be the middle of the other fan, and single crochet right into the top of it. Skip two stitches, that brings you to the single crochet between previous fans, and work five double crochet into it. And that's the pattern across for the even rows. You work a half fan at the beginning, skip two stitches, single crochet into the top or the middle stitch of the previous fan. Skip two stitches, find the middle, the third stitch, which will be a single crochet between fans, and work a five double crochet fan into it. Skip two stitches, that brings you up to the middle of another fan, single crochet into it. Repeat that all the way across, and I'll catch up with you at the end of row two. We're nearing the end of row two, you will have worked a single crochet into the third or middle stitch of the previous fan from the previous row. And the last thing you're going to do is work a half fan into that single crochet that's at the very end of the previous row. So find that single crochet, get your hook into it, and work a half fan, which is three double crochets. So remember, an even row begins and ends with a half fan which is three double crochet, or in the case of when you begin, that chain three counts as a double crochet. So there's your half fan, and that's the end of row two. Every even row looks like row two. If you're not changing color, chain one and turn your work. If you are changing color, like I am, then don't chain one. <laughs> Just finish your last stitch and fasten off. Grab your next color, make sure you turn your work. So for me, that's going to be red now. And join your new color by creating a slip knot and attaching your yarn with a slip stitch in the top of the same stitch that you fastened off from the previous row. So that would be a double crochet, find the top of it, slip your hook in there, and join with a slip stitch. Then you want to chain one. So if you didn't change colors, you just chained one and turned. If you did change colors, you fastened off, joined your new color with a slip stitch, and chained one. Here we go for row three, and this is what every odd row looks like. Begin with a single crochet in the same stitch that you chained one out of. Skip two stitches, that will bring you to the single crochet between fan and half fan from the previous row 
work a full fan into it. Five double crochets. Then the rest of the row is pretty straightforward. After you've worked your five double crochets, skip two stitches that should bring you right up to the very middle top stitch of the fan from the previous row, single crochet into it, skip two stitches, that'll bring you to the single crochets between fans, and into that single crochet work five double crochets or a fan, and continue that pattern all the way across to the end, and I'll catch up with you there. When you're approaching the end of row three, or every odd row, work your last fan into the single crochet between the full fan and the half fan from the previous row, and then find the top of the chain three, that's the beginning of that half fan from the previous row, and single crochet into it. So every odd row begins and ends with a single crochet. Every even row begins and ends with a half fan. We're moving on to row four, which is an even row, so if you're not changing color, chain three. If you are changing color, like me, snip your yarn, fasten off, and join your new color with a slip stitch in the top of the same stitch that you just fastened off from. Once you've joined your new color, chain three, and if you didn't change colors, you should have a chain three and you should be facing the right direction now. We start all over again. Every even row begins with a half fan. The chain three that you work at the beginning of every even row counts as a double crochet. So your half fan at the beginning of every even row consists of a three chain plus two double crochets. And then your pattern begins. Skip two stitches, find the third single crochet into it, that'll be the top of a fan. Skip two stitches, find the third, that'll be a single crochet, work a full fan into it. That's five double crochets. Continue that pattern all the way across, and you will end your even row with a half fan, or three double crochets. And then you can just continue this pattern for a total of 12 rows. I'm going to repeat each of my four colors three times, so I'm going to go yellow, green, red, brown, yellow, green, red, brown, and I'm going to repeat that colorway three times in total. That'll give me 12 individual rows of this pattern stitch, and at the end of row 12, I will catch up with you. All right, I have completed 12 rows of my little dishcloth, repeating each of my four colors three times. I've decided that I want to have my border of my dishcloth in gold, so I'm gonna go ahead and add one more row of gold to the top, which will be a 13th row of the scallop stitch pattern. So you can go ahead and add a 13th row if you like, if you've done the sort of color patterning that I have with four different colors, or you can skip ahead to the bit where we add on the border. Either way, bear with me, I'm just gonna put on one more row, that's row 13 of my bright yellow color, because I'm going to border my entire dishcloth in yellow. All right, I've added one extra row of the yellow because I wanna border my entire little dishcloth in that yellow color, and I want it to be somewhat even on both top and bottom. So I have 13 rows, which means I ended with an odd row, which means my last row ended with a single crochet. If you ended with the 12 rows, or 14, or 16, or however many you wanted, and you're on an even row, that means you'll have ended with a half fan. This is how we work the border. You're going to chain one and turn, regardless of whether you're on an even or an odd row. If you're on an even row and you ended with a half fan, you're going to work a single crochet into that first stitch. If you ended with an odd row, like I did, you're going to work a half double crochet into that first stitch. Across the top, of a fan, so across every single double crochet, you're going to work a single crochet. This is regardless of whether you're on a even row or an odd row. So if your next stitch is a double crochet, you work a single crochet into it. If your next stitch is a single crochet, you're going to work a half double crochet into it. So if it's a single crochet from the previous row, you work a half double crochet into it. If it's a double crochet from the previous row, you work a single crochet into it. So you can work single crochets into the tops of all your double crochets, and half double crochets into the tops of all your single crochets, 
all the way across and I'll see you at the end of this first side. When you get to the end of your first side, if your last stitch in the previous row was a single crochet, work a half double crochet into it. If the last stitch in that row is a chain three or a double crochet, work a single crochet into it. But because we're going to treat that last stitch of the row as a quarter stitch, no matter what even or odd row you're on, you're going to chain two and work the exact same stitch you just did into it again. So for me, that's a half double crochet. If you ended with a single crochet at the end of your first border side, then you work another single crochet into it. All you want to do is create a little corner. You can also take this opportunity, as you're working down your raw edges, to single crochet over top of your little short tails. Um, if they're somewhat further in, you can take a moment at the end and weave them all in. And here's how we work the raw edges. All double crochets or chain threes up the side get two single crochets worked into the edge of them. So just pick a piece of that double crochet stitch or the chain three and work a couple single crochets into it. When you get to an edge stitch which would have been a single crochet, just jam your hook into it somehow and work a single crochet into it. So single crochet stitches along a raw edge get a single crochet. Double crochet stitches or chain threes get two single crochets worked into it. And that's all you need to know to work up and down the two raw edges. So when you come to the edge of a fan, you work two single crochets into it, a single crochet anchor from a, a, an odd row gets a single crochet, just one, and then two single crochets across a half fan, single crochet into the edge of an anchor single crochet. Nice and straightforward, no need to really count. And I'll see you at the bottom. Once you get down to the bottom of your raw edge, the last single crochet you work should be into the edge of the single crochet that began your foundation or your row one. And since we're going to treat that as a corner stitch, you're going to chain two and single crochet into the same stitch. It's pretty straightforward across the bottom. We're going to work a single crochet into the bottom of every single foundation chain all the way across. So as you come across the bottom of a foundation chain, just work a single crochet into it and I will see you at the other side. When you get across the bottom of your little dishcloth, the last single crochet you're going to work is into the bottom of the single crochet that would have started it all. <laughs> You're going to chain two, work another single crochet into that same underside of that single crochet chain from the foundation row, and then it's just the same thing all the way up the other raw edge. Work a single crochet into each anchor single crochet, and two single crochets into the edge of each half fan. No need to count, just Work your way nice and steady all the way up the edge, and I'll see you when we get up there. Once you get up the other raw edge of your dishcloth, we're just going to create another little corner. So you work your last single crochet into the edge of that first or that last row you did. And if you started with a half double crochet, it doesn't matter. You can chain two and join to the top. If you started with a single crochet, it's the same thing. Join two, chain two, and join to the top with a slip stitch. And that's your little neat and tidy corner. We're not completely finished though. I always like to put a little hanger on my dishcloth so I can hang them up on a hook if I want to dry them or display them. So I'm just going to chain 12. And try not to turn my chain row. And I'm just going to slip stitch down into the base of the very first little chain I made. And that's it. I'm going to fasten off and weave in my tail. I'm also going to take the opportunity to weave in any other little tails that might be poking out here or there. If they're just little bits of fluff because I've managed to get most of it, I'll trim those. 
But any other little tails that might still be hanging out, here's one here, I'm going to take the opportunity with my yarn needle and weave them all in before I call it a done deal. Once you've woven in all of your little ends and snipped off the little bits and pieces that may have been sticking out, you're done! That is one pretty simple cotton harvest dishcloth or hot pad. You can use it for either purpose. <laughs> I hope you had fun making this along with me this week, everyone. And I hope wherever you are, you're enjoying some lovely autumn weather. May the colors of the changing season inspire you this fall, and we'll see you really soon on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week. Bye, everybody!